Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for every decree. Thank you for every word that has been made mentioned, declared in this atmosphere. We come in agreement with it. We say it is done in Jesus' name. As we listen to your word, we thank you that our hearts are open. We thank you that, Father, our ears are open to receive. Thank you for the ability to communicate your word with clarity, with your authority and with power. Thank you that none of your word shall fall to the ground. But, Father, it performs that which that you're sending it to do this morning. Take all the glory, take all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Come on, just thank him in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word. If you an encounter, you will live to talk about. Hallelujah. You see, for us, some of these words are not just words. We hook in the spirit realm. Amen. Uh, the Bible says you will have whatever you say. So we say in Jesus' name, memorable testimonies, memorable breakthroughs in the name of Jesus over your children, over your business, over your finances, over your relationships, over, over everything that concerns us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to pick from where I left last Sunday. By the am I clear? Okay. Hallelujah. So last Sunday we talked about the laws of faith. And uh, we said number one law of faith uh, is the law of what? How many of us remember what we talked about last Sunday? We talked about uh, the, the, ear being the, uh, the ear being the faith gate. And so we looked at uh, Romans chapter 10 from verse 17 where the scriptures tells us that faith comes by hearing. What you hear daily is building faith within you. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear something, the more the muscle, the internal, uh, the, the, the spiritual or the faith muscle grows or the ability for you to accommodate that which you hear grows within you. Then we looked at the word, uh, the, that word faith in Greek. It means ikeo, E-K-O-E which means hearing and understanding. So if you are going to operate in faith, we must hear it, but not just hear it, but understand it too. And we looked at Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19. It says, By wisdom, God created or formed the heavens, and by understanding, He established it. The spiritual life is a love, life of faith. We saw four times the Bible telling us in Habakkuk, that the just shall live by faith. The same word is repeated in Romans. The just shall live by faith. Galatians, the just shall live by faith. And then also in Hebrews, the same word is repeated. The just shall live by faith. So faith is not an alternative. Faith is not a spare will. It's not something that you say now that I don't know what to do. Let me just have faith. No, faith is the operating system of a believer. Amen. Just the same way the computer has, you know, if it's a PC, they operate under Windows. The Mac computers operate with Linux. Now we have Ubuntu and many others. But then what makes the computer function with ease is the operating system behind it. Am I making sense? So it is with us, the spiritual life. They just for us to see the manifestation of the promises of God in our lives, we must live by faith. Amen. And so we saw number two, that faith does not operate in the present tense. It operates in the past tense. And we looked at uh, some of the decrees uh, that Jesus, uh, not Jesus, whenever God would speak to uh, like uh, uh, Joshua chapter 1, uh, from verse 1 it says now after the death of Moses my servant the Lord speaks to Joshua he says Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise and go over this Jordan you and all these people to the land which I am giving you so according to God it was already done but according to them 
they are going to walk in it in the present. Am I talking to somebody? Then in Hebrews, uh, you know, Ephesians tells us, Behold, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. Is that right? So when we operate in faith, we are not operating in the present. We are operating in the finished work of Jesus. Am I making sense? So faith sees things that as not as though faith sees things done in the present. They are already done. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says now faith is a substance of things hoped for. What you are hoping for, what gives it substance is faith. Prayer is not enough. Faith is a substance that gives our faith. Uh, faith, uh, faith is a substance of our, of our hope. Faith is what gives substance to our hope. Every decision in the courtroom is won by evidence. So if I'm going to have faith in the, uh, if I'm going to present my petition, my prayer before God, my evidence is the word of God. Am I making sense? What makes me come boldly before the courtroom is the evidence that I have. So faith becomes our evidence in prayer. Or the word of God becomes evidence in, in our prayer when we present it by faith. Faith begins where the will of God is known. We talked about it last Sunday. Where the will of God is known, then faith begins to operate. Faith begins where the will of God is known. The word of God reveals to us the purposes of God and the direction of our faith. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1. I just want us to look at a few things today. And uh, I believe that the Lord will speak to us. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 19, uh, from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 9 to 12. It says, then the, Lord, uh, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to plant, uh, to build and to plant. Verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me and saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Almond tree. Verse 12. Then the Lord said unto me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. So the revelation of our faith begins from where the word of God is revealed. Am I talking to somebody? This is God speaking to Jeremiah. If you study Jeremiah chapter 1, he says, he calls him, he tells Jeremiah, even before you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I formed you. I purpose for you to fulfill my purposes. And so Jeremiah in his heart, he says, but I'm young. And so the Lord rebukes him and says, do not say that you're young. So that's why he says, I have put my words in your mouth. In other words, if I am going to break through in this world, I need the word of God in my mouth. Am I speaking to somebody? Because that word of God in my mouth is the one that is giving substance to my faith. Hallelujah. So my faith is not based on feelings. No, it's not based on the happenings of the exterior. It's based on what God has said. He asked Jeremiah, what do you see? And this morning God is asking you, in your condition, what do you see? You see, he says, I see an almond tree. In the physical Jeremiah was seeing an almond tree. So he says, yeah, what you have seen, you have seen well. But then I am ready as, 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 as the same way you have seen in the physical, the almond tree, I am ready to perform my word that I have said to you. Am I speaking to somebody? So until we get revelation of God's word, revolution will not happen in our lives. It is the word of God that brings transformation in our lives. Until we speak the word of God, in faith, things remain static. Until we speak that word in faith, everything remains static. Things begin to change when we put our faith in God's word. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. So that is why praying the word of God is like an ammunition. You're releasing in the spirit world what you're doing, you're shooting. You're, 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 it's, it's like a, a gun that is loaded. And so our mouth, is, our mouth becomes the, uh, that, that, that firing, what do you call that? 
uh, it's, it's the one that is firing the shots. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24, it says he personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his stripes or by his wounds, we were healed. So faith operates in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Not we will be healed. Not I will be someday healed. No, we were healed. It was already settled. Am I talking to somebody? Then Mark 11 chapter 28, 24. It says, for this reason I, I say unto you, whosoever shall, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe that you, it's granted to you and you'll get it. Believe that it is already done to you. So faith operates in the past tense of what God has done. That word believe in Greek, it's uh, pisteo, P-I-S-T-O. It means to dwell in a place of rest while believing. To dwell. Hallelujah. So God wants us to rest our faith in his finished work. Am I speaking to somebody? Law number three, very quickly. Law, law number three. Faith operates when there is corresponding action to it. When there is corresponding actions. When you, I, I, I believe I gave us an example of a, a Charles Finney. Now Jacob is one of the guys. We have Jacob with us and uh, it's a blessing. This is my, uh, we, I don't know, I call him my small brother. We grew up, experienced life together when we were young. Uh, Jacob, you remember the days that we'd go and pray in, uh, we'd go to Karura Mount, what do you call that mountain? Uh, Gong Hills. And we'll be, we've, read, we've read things about Charles Finney. And so we want to go and try these things. Last Sunday gave us an example of Charles Finney. One time Charles Finney in his crusade, when he's closing down the meeting, the elders asked Charles Finney, please pray that there will, be, there will be rain. And so Charles Finney tells the people, tomorrow when you come, make sure you come with blanket, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with uh, what do you call that? With the uh, umbrella and, and, and raincoats. Very few people did that. So after his crusade, he prayed. You see, Finney had the corresponding actions. He came with his umbrella and with his jacket. Every time there is a corresponding actions to your faith, God will move. Am I speaking to somebody? When it comes to our giving, when it comes to our praying, when it comes to our actions of faith, as long as there is corresponding actions, the Bible says without faith we cannot please God. They that come to him must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Am I speaking to somebody? So there must be a corresponding action. If you're believing God for healing, don't just pray for healing and say, but I'm still feeling pain. No, begin to exercise your faith to do something that you could not do before. Am I talking to somebody? Because in exercising your faith to do what you could not do, what you're doing, you're triggering spiritual laws into position. Hallelujah. Life is spiritual. It is beyond what we see in the natural. Every victory begins on the inside. Every failure begins on the inside. But when we correspond our actions of faith with what God has said, I'm telling you, this sign shall follow them that believe. When we begin to take actions, signs begin to follow. Am I speaking to somebody? The word, uh, uh, that word, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm jumping, I'm going ahead of myself. In James chapter 2, James chapter 2 verse 17, it says, so also faith, if it does not have works or deeds and actions of obedience, this is the amplified, to back it up, by itself is destitute of power, inoperative and dead. Let me take that one again. Amplified says this. Uh, Charles, if you have amplified. says, so also uh, this is about faith. If it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it. So if you're saying, I'm believing God for a breakthrough, but your actions, your words, are words of fear, doubt, unbelief, you're speaking impossibility, you're speaking doom, your words, your actions, your deeds, what you're saying are not corresponding with what you're expecting. Am I speaking to somebody? So he says, so also faith, it does not work 
uh, that does not have works. Those are deeds and actions of obedience to back it. By itself, it's destitute of power, inoperative, and it's dead. In Jesus' name, our faith shall not be dead. Oh, I will say that again. Your faith shall not be a dead faith. Hallelujah. You see, dead faith is when we pray prayers that we don't expect God to do them. We are not expecting God to answer them. Powerful prayers are not eloquent prayers. Powerful prayers are prayers that you stay in that place. You refuse to be refused. Am I speaking to somebody? When the, when the physical and the natural is speaking contrary, you keep believing, you keep speaking to it. Hallelujah. I will not die but live to glorify God. These two shall work out together for my good. He's making a way and everything is contrary. Faith rests in the finished work. But you must push it. You must put a, a faith pressure on things. That word works in Greek. I like, you know, the richness of language. There's a language, especially the, the Greek and the Latin, has the third dimension to it. English is one dimension. When I say come, in English it simply means come. But in Greek, when you say, for example, when you say power, it's not just power. It means dunamis. It means the ability to perform. It means the authority to do. So you see, in English, we have one dimension of understanding. But in Greek, it gives us the third dimension. Am I making sense? And that's why I like going to Greek. It says, when it, when it talks about work, it's eregon, e -E 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 E-R-G-O-N. That's the meaning of works. But then it's, it's elaborate meaning. It's mean, it means actions that have expectation to fulfillment. I like that. When it says faith without works, it means actions that have expectations to be fulfilled. <laughs> Your faith will always have an expectation of fulfillment. Glory to God. So without that ergon or eregon, the expectation of fulfillment, that faith is dead. Hallelujah. There must be an expectation of fulfillment. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Am I speaking to somebody? Faith is seen through the works. Faith is not seen through words only, through the works. By you being here today, it's an act of faith. Hallelujah. It's an act of faith, one, in what God is doing and in what God is doing here. Am I making sense? It's an act of faith. You're saying, God, I still believe what you've spoken concerning this vision. Hallelujah. It's an act of faith. Faith can be seen by acts and attitudes. It's visible. You cannot say, I have faith and there are no acts or attitudes of faith. Hallelujah. Our giving, for example, when we say we are giving to God 10% of our tithe, the fact that you're giving a 10%, it's an act of faith in what God has promised. Am I speaking to somebody? And then the fact that you fear to give 10%, it's an act of fear in what the enemy is saying. Am I speaking to somebody? So the law of faith, number four, is released through our mouth, through our mouth or through our words. When you're going to, if you're going to operate in the spirit of faith, you must hear and then hear by the spirit. And last week, I'm not going to go back into all that. We said there are two different dimensions of hearing. You can hear with your natural ears, but then the faith that comes, comes by hearing with your spiritual ears. You can hear the same word, but all of you understand it in different dimensions. That's why the scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every proceeding word that comes from the mouth of God. You all had the same word, but he ministered to you in different dimensions. Why? Because he knows what you need and what you need to hear when you hear that word. Hallelujah. So the law of faith is released, is released by the mouth of God, by, by, uh, through our mouth. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 says, But what shall we say then? The word is near you even in your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word is near you even in your heart. And then Paul calls that word 
the word of faith. So the word of faith is only the word of faith if it's in our heart and in our mouth. Am I speaking to somebody? If you believe in sickness, that one becomes your word of faith. But when you believe in what God has said and you stand in that word, then that which God has said becomes your word of faith. But he says, what shall we say then? The word is near you. It's in your lips and it's in your heart. It's not far-fetched. He said, that is the word of faith which we preach. Then verse 9, it says, because if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and in your heart believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With your mouth you confess, with your heart you believe. The same principle comes for every other thing that you're trusting God to do in your life. With your mouth you confess it, you release it. With your heart you receive it. Hallelujah. I've been making some dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers. Declare. You see, before God formed you, everything concerning you, you already put into place. Am I talking to you? The people you'll meet, the resources you'll need, the places you need to be, you already put that one in place. He's not figuring out, okay, what shall he do today? What shall she do? No, all that. All the, in regards to the assignment of your life, every connection that you need, it's already in place. So my declaration has been, I'm coming into alignment with everything that God has written concerning me. So you begin to call them from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. They are coming together. Resources are coming together. Ideas are coming together. Helpers of destiny are coming together. In the name of Jesus, the nations that I'm supposed to be in, they are coming. They are opening it up and they are coming together. When you begin to do that, what you're doing, you're releasing the word of God, the word of faith, which is in your heart. Now, I'm not saying, you know, we can pray ambitious prayers. They are, they are ambitious prayers and they are prayers of faith. You can say something because you heard somebody saying, that is ambition. But when God reveals something to your heart and you begin to speak it, you're giving substance to that word. Am I speaking to somebody? So we have the same spirit of faith. Uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 13. Uh, Paul speaking. So we see the word is in your mouth uh, and then it's in your heart. But then through our mouth we confess and then with our heart we believe. 2 Corinthians, chap uh, Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. It says, and since we have the same word, spirit of faith, according as it's written, I believe and therefore I do what? So you cannot believe and not speak. It says, I have believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we do what? We speak. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am healed. As, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The way you're saying it's like you don't believe it. Somebody say, I am healed. I am prosperous. I am blessed. I am wise. I am favored. I am, I am lifted. I am strong. I am victorious. Because I believe, therefore I, I speak it. Hallelujah. Because I believe it, therefore I, listen. The spirit of faith or else what God has already done in Christ Jesus does not come to fulfillment until we speak it. Hallelujah. Legally, Jesus has done all he needs to do. He cannot die again. He has done everything. The Bible says, according to God, he's given us all things that pertain to life and unto godliness. Through his great and precious promises, he has given us these promises that by them we should be we become partakers of the, he has done everything that he needs to do. Am I speaking to somebody? He has given us all things, not will give us. He has given us. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. But how do we activate that victory? Because we believe. Therefore we speak. Hallelujah. Because we believe. Hallelujah. I believe I am victorious. I believe I am prosperous. I believe I'm the head and not the tail. I believe I am. Therefore, I speak. Glory to God. With your mouth, you release it. You believe it in your heart, but you release it with your mouth. Hallelujah. Faith in your heart 
is released through your mouth. Faith in your heart is released through your mouth. Our words are faith containers. Our words are faith containers. Hallelujah. So I, I remember when I was talking about the law of confession. We said that words can locate you. You can locate where somebody is by their words. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how discernment works. You just listen. If you can be a good listener, you'll be a good designer. Hallelujah. That, I, that's what I was taught of the spirit. If you can listen well, you will design well. If you talk too much, you might miss it. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. So faith or else words are faith containers. With your ear, your ear is the entrance of that word. But your mouth is the exit of the faith of God. Am I speaking to somebody? The ear is the, ear, is the entrance. That is where faith comes by hearing. But the release of that faith is by our mouth. Hallelujah. You know, words are like a bullet. And faith is the gunpowder. You see a bullet, the shell of the bullet, inside it there is the gunpowder. So the word of God in our mouth becomes that gunpowder or else that, that, uh, the, that container. Uh, uh, the word in our mouth becomes the gunpowder in that bullet. Am I speaking to somebody? So when you begin to speak that word in faith, you're actually shooting deadly forces of the word of God. Hallelujah. That's why the just shall live by. The just shall live by faith. Speaking it. Declaring. Standing on it. Hallelujah. Embracing that which God has said. Uh, let's look at, uh, let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 4 verse 17. Romans, I want this thing to sink in your spirit. You begin, the moments that you feel you cannot pray, when you begin to declare who you are, the spirit of prayer will fall upon you. Am I speaking to somebody? When things seem not to, you're not seeing the way out. You be, just declare who you are in Christ. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. It says that it's re, as it's written, I have made you the father of many nations. This is God's promise over Abraham. Abraham has lived. The Bible says through faith and patience, he begins to possess the promises of God. He says in his presence of whom he has believed, uh, in, his, in the presence of whom he has believed God. Who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as what? As what? As though they exist. Are we reading the same scripture? Let's look at the same, same scripture in the Amplified Version. I want this to sink in your spirit. So confession is not something that somebody came up with. It says that as it's written, I have made you the father of many nations. Remember when God is speaking to Abraham at this point in time, Abraham has no son. Abraham has no, has no, there is no lineage that he's leaving behind. But then God already sees him as a father of many nations. He says that he, has, he, was, uh, he was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. Who gives life to the dead and speaks to non-existent things. Uh, he has foretold and has promised as if they already exist. What is it in your life that is not existing? You don't speak to it as though it's not existing. Am I speaking to somebody? You speak to it as though it's already existing. Speaking to those things that are not as though they were. Am I speaking to somebody? So when you begin to speak the word of God in faith, you're creating. Words of faith are creative words. Creative faith is released through words. Hallelujah. Confession without words does not move mountains. And these are not physical mountains. We are talking of spiritual demonic mountains. Whether it's fear, failure, limitations, barriers, embargoes that have been placed in the spiritual realm. It's our words that begins to break that realm. When we speak and stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. We activate our healing by the word. We activate signs and wonders in our lives by the word of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. We saw this I believe when I was talking about faith. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse, from, uh, from verse 6 says and God said. Verse 6 says and God said. Verse 9 says and God said. Verse 11 and God said. Verse 14 and God said. Verse 20 and God said. Verse 24 and God said. 
verse 26 and God said. So the pattern of seeing manifestation is saying it and seeing it. He said and he saw it. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. It tells us that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But we must say it. We must embrace it for us to see it in manifestation. Amen. The substance of our faith is in what God has said. It's not in what we are saying. It's in what God has. In what God has said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I believe we saw this last Sunday uh, in, in Psalms 103 verse 20. It says, bless the Lord, he, you his angels. It says, uh, bless the Lord, you his angels. You who my, you mighty ones who do his command hearkening to the voice of his word. So the promises of God are voice activated. So for us to give voice to that word, we must speak it. For us to give the angels an assignment, we must speak that word. Am I speaking to somebody? We see in Daniel chapter 12, uh, chapter 10, verse 12. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. He said, then he said unto me, fear not Daniel. From the first day that you prayed, you set your mind and your heart to understand. And you humble yourself before the Lord, your God. Your words were hard. And I came as a consequence of your words. From the first day that you spoke, from the first day that you humble yourself, the new King James said, he said unto me, do not fear Daniel, uh, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself to, be, uh, to come before the Lord, your words were hard. And I have come because of your words. So when you begin to make declaration based on God's word, the angels of God comes. Am I talking to somebody? This is not just a theological. No, this is the truth of what God does. The laws of faith. When we begin to activate that word by faith, the angels of God are released. He said, I have come as a consequence of your words. Faith-filled words produces and activates the angelic activities. Faith-filled words. Let's look at another example. Daniel chapter 9 verse 23. Daniel chapter 9 verse 23. It says at the beginning of your prayers the word went forth and I came to tell you of the great and I came to tell you uh, for you are greatly beloved. He said do not uh, 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 Charles 9.23 Daniel chapter 9 verse 23. He said at the beginning of your supplication the command went out and I came to tell you for you are greatly beloved. Let's look at it in the NL, NLT. I believe it's an L, NLT, New Living Translation. New Living At the moment you began praying, the command was given. And, I have, and, and now I have come to tell you uh, what is that which is, uh, that which was precious for you. Uh, that which was very precious to God. Listening carefully so that you can understand the meaning of it. One translation that I was reading, I'm trying to remember what I just uh, put it down. Uh, that says, I have come as a consequence of your words. Then it says, the word went out. At the beginning of your prayers, the word went out. And I have come because of your word. Let's look at the All King James. The KJV. Just All King James. At the beginning of his application, da, 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 da. But anyway, there's a translation that I read. It says, the word went out. So when you begin to pray the word, the angels of God are assigned to that word. Am I talking to somebody? They are assigned to the words that you're praying. Hallelujah. You, are, you, you give voice to the word of God when you speak it. You give voice to the word of God. As long as it's written, it remains in the pages. But the moment you believe it in your heart, then speak it with your mouth. You are actually giving voice to that word. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. Never repeat what the devil says because you're giving strength to it. Always say that which God says. Hallelujah. I don't repeat gossip. I don't repeat what people, any negative, I don't repeat because I understand this law. The more you say it, the more you enforce it. Hallelujah. But the more you say who God says you are, the more you enforce the angels of God to begin to fight for you. 
I see God doing that for you in Jesus' name. I said I see God fighting for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So Daniel was praying and as a consequence of the words that he released, the angels of God was, were activated. Our voice, act, our voice activates the word of God. Let's look at uh, uh, Isaiah 54 verse 17. This is a verse that we began with some time back. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue so words are released by the tongue. Am I talking to somebody? Evil words, blessings are released by the tongue. Curses are also released by the tongue. But it says every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment. Meaning that words have, that have declared what your end will be. It says any words that rise against you in judgment, you shall show it to be wrong. How do you show it to be wrong? By saying what God has said about you. Am I speaking to somebody? Say, this is the inheritance of the children of God. For no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises you in judgment, you condemn it. This translation says, you prove it to be wrong. When you condemn it, you condemn it with your words. You say what God has said concerning you. Say, this is the, inher the heritage of the servants of God. And their righteousness is of me. So you're not standing in your own righteousness when you're doing that. Remember, the just shall live the just, the just shall live by his faith. We are not standing before God in our own righteousness, but in the finished work of Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody? By decreeing this verse over and over, you're surrounding yourself with the angelic activities. Am I speaking to some? No weapon formed against me. In other words, you're charging the angels of God to begin to fulfill that which will declare what you prove to be on the wrong. Whether it's sickness, somebody has declared you're not going to make it in life. You stand up and say in the name of Jesus, I nullify every contrary word that has been spoken against him. We saw it in Colossians that Jesus nailed on the cross every word, every ordinance. He made manifest of it. So you begin to declare it. That this word is not of God. Hallelujah. You all know I don't believe dreams that are not in agreement with the word of God. I will say that which God says. Hallelujah. I will declare that which God declares. Am I speaking to somebody? So talk victory and not problems. Talk solutions and not complications. That's how you think big. That's how you talk big. Hallelujah. That's how you invade the realm of darkness. You speak what God has spoken. Declare victory. Our declaration of victory releases angelic activities against the enemy. Speak life over your life and not death. Over your children, over your finances, over your health, over your career. Speak life to it. Hallelujah. Don't come in agreement with every negative word that is being declared. No, come in agreement with what God has said. Am I speaking to somebody? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. When we stand on the word of God, make declaration, we are framing our world. Am I speaking to somebody? You frame your word, world with the word of God. That word world, again the Greek translation means a, a neons. It means seasons and times of life were framed by the word of God. So if seasons and times of life were framed by the word of God, it means I can frame my season by the word of God. Am I talking to somebody? I can frame my timing with the word of God. Oh, you're not hearing this. Man, you'll wake up in the morning and say, this is what pastor meant. Hallelujah. You can frame your destiny by the word of God. The word, he, he formed the worlds. The worlds were formed by the, the neons, the seasons, the timings. When there is drought, you will say there is abundance. Am I speaking to somebody? When there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up. You are creating seasons and times. Hallelujah. By faith, the word, he, by the word he, create, he framed the world. Hallelujah. My children will not die in ignorance. They will be known for greatness. They are meant for signs and for wonders. In the name of Jesus, the seed of the righteous shall be mighty in this land. You are framing their destiny. You're framing their timing. Hallelujah. They will be known for good and not for evil. Glory to God. Ha! 
Hallelujah. You're framing their seasons and their timings. You speak to your life. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. You're framing your season and your timings. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. Remember faith without works. After you spoke and you begin to carry yourself like your words. Hallelujah. You, carry, you speak to your children like your words. You speak to your finances like your words. Am I speaking to somebody? What you have released, you begin to give it corresponding actions. Hallelujah. You call them prosperous. You call them the head. You call them blessed. You call them the favored ones. Hallelujah. So we frame our worlds. And the worlds there is different dimensions of life. Different dimensions of life. There's the sea world. There's the earth world. Is that right? The underground there's a world. Worms, insects, they live underground. But also underground there's gold, there's silver, there's diamond, there's oil. So there are precious things in that world. If we can frame the world by the world, by the word, then we can call those things that are in the world to come to us. Am I speaking to somebody? Saying, oh, this is just, pro this is, this is, pros no, no, it's not a prosperity gospel. It says all things are mine. That's what the Bible says. All things are yours. So that's why God says in his, uh, 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 Matthew, don't look at the birds of the air. They do not worry. They do not fret. For I clothe them. How much more you? Because for us, the heavens and the earth, the heavens are the Lord, but the Bible says the earth he has given it to men. Is that right? My goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, sometimes you fear going places. It will sound like, hey, you're going into a territory that we've not had. The earth has been given to men. That's why he said, I'm giving you dominion over the world, the, uh, the, over, the, uh, over this, the, uh, the plants of the earth, the, the sea, the, the birds of the earth. I've given you dominion. It's in the control of men. But then in the control of men, if we don't align with God's word, we allow the enemy to do what he wants. From today, it shall not be so in Jesus' name. I said it will not be so in Jesus' name. Back to my point. It says, worlds, the sea world, there, 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 there are minerals in the sea world. There are animals in the sea world. The fish, the whale, and the sea world has, has, uh, has animals. The air world also has, has, has life in there. Is that right? Am I talking to somebody? So all the three realms, the Bible says we understand they were framed by the word of God. Are we still here? So if the word frame things in these realms, you as a child of God, we can frame our world calling those things in those realms. Hallelujah. Listen, the people of darkness have known to tap into that. Astronomy. Astro is it astrology? Astrology. Astro astrology. They've learned to tap into that. Witchcraft. They've learned to tap into that. But they've tapped into that in a negative direction. How much more with the children of the light when we tap into it in the light of the word? May God give us understanding that we can frame the worlds. The earth will come in alignment with me. The sun, that's why he says the sun shall not smite you by day. The moon shall not withdraw itself. Those are rems. The earth shall lead its increase. Those are rems. Hallelujah. So when I say I've been praying some dangerous prayers, I've been calling some things. When, I had, when this revelation sank into my spirit, that hey, these things have an ear because they were framed by the word of God. They have an ear because they were called to be. Say the sea, you can only come this far. Whatever he put into that sea that can benefit me, I can call it. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it will come to my door. The sea will come to my door. But the resources of that sea will come to your door. Am I speaking to somebody? I don't want, to, I don't want the sea or the wind to come to my door. But I want the resources. The airwaves. Is that right? Hallelujah. The technology that we have. That's the air. The media world. 
my goodness, may he give us understanding that we'll have dominion in that realm. You begin something and God will amplify it. Hallelujah. If it's in that realm, it will be amplified. God will multiply it. You begin oil business, he, multi he multiply. Why? Because that realm comes in alignment with you. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. So you determine the direction of your world or the structure of your world by the words that you speak. Our words are creating our world. Hallelujah. You can either speak health or speak sickness. You can either speak poverty or speak healing. Hallelujah. You can either speak victory or speak defeat. You are framing something. Whether you know it or not, it's a principle. Are we still here? I want to close with this John chapter 6 verse 36. Jesus speaking, he says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Nothing. And then the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I, Jesus says, the words that I'm, this morning, the word that I'm speaking to you, it is spirit and is life. It's bringing life into your spirit. It's bringing revelation into your spirit. It's causing you to see things in a different, why? Because it is spirit and it is life. Hallelujah. The flesh profits nothing. In other words, this has nothing to do with your feelings. It has everything to do with what Jesus has already fulfilled. Am I speaking to somebody? The flesh profits. I'm not waiting for my flesh. I feel God. No, 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 no. He has said it. Because he has said it, my feelings will agree with it. Am I talking to you? I was listening. I was not listening. I, was, I went back to one of the book of, uh, what do you call this man? Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth is known for ragged faith. Ragged, ragged means the man you'd wake him up in the morning to pray for maybe someone who was like one, 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 um, one, one, one example. He was called to pray for a lady who had a tumor in his stomach. And so Smith Wigglesworth walks into this house. The lady is lying, uh, you know, the family lying uh, in the living room. And then Smith Wigglesworth sees the tumor. And he asks them, do you believe she's going to be healed? So we've been praying. Then he says, keep quiet. He goes to the lady. He punches that tumor out of the lady. And everyone in the room, you can imagine, this is somebody who's been sickly about to die. Everybody in the room started wailing that you have killed him. You have, you have killed her. You have killed her. You have killed. So he, told, he tells everyone in the room, get out. Get out. I mean, he was man of authority. He was man of power. So he tells everyone to get out. Then he commands the lady. At this point, I mean, she was breathing like she was going to die. I'm not saying, do not, this, these are those that they say, do not, do not attempt this. <laughs> Don't say, pastor, say, no, 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 no. You must have the faith of speed with also to do that. So this guy, he punches the lady. The lady, that, that last breath, you know that, like, like she's going now, she's gone. Smith goes to looks at the lady say, stand in Jesus name. Get up. You know, he was very forceful. Uh, forceful. The lady couldn't wake up. Smith goes to takes the lady, grabs her by the shoulder, you know, and physically gets the lady to stand. She falls down. Takes again. Stand in Jesus name. You know, by the third time, that lady was standing and she was crying. I mean, she was coughing. Now that's ragged faith that does not go by what it sees in the natural. Am I talking to somebody? It does not go by what it sees in the natural. Many times because of us relying on the natural, I'm not feeling it. No, faith is not a feeling. Faith is an act. Acts of faith, when you begin to take actions of faith, the spirit of faith comes along with it. Am I speaking to someone? I remember years back when we were beginning the ministry and I was told it's impossible. Don't even think about doing something like that in Baltimore. You know, people will just come. People don't give. People will not support it. It was impossible in the natural. And I was given a line of everyone that has tried. I say, well, we'll still take step of faith. I remember going to one of the hotels to ask them for, a, uh, for us to use the place. They also told me the same thing. We no longer allow churches in, the, in this hotel. 
That was Mariusville at, at that uh, Mariusville Hotel at that time. And then I asked the I asked the lady the uh, the lady at the reception, why don't you give me the number of the uh, the, the manager? Is there anyone else I can talk to? Say, you know what? They will tell you the same thing. I say, no, give me the number of someone I can talk to. I call the manager. The manager tells me the same thing that this lady called, uh, told me. So I said, no, is there anyone else I can talk to? Because in my spirit, it was already settled. The first day I walked into that hotel, I saw that hall. And I saw myself in that hall. I saw the place filled. I saw, I saw, I saw myself preaching. It was not going to be otherwise. So I said, listen. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Well, the other uh, no, this, uh, he asked me, why do you really want to use here? He said, no, this is the place I believe we need to start our ministry. So, okay, I can give you a number. This is the number to the head office. You talk to them. I remember calling, talking to a lady called Sally. Sally tells me, uh, well, I'll see what I can do. I say, actually, we want to begin our meetings 12th of March. See, remember the date. This is in September of... Um, 2011 I believe we, we have already set the date for March 12th that's when the first day so I tell her whatever you do just book for me that time say well I've, I haven't said I will do I say no 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 you book for me that time then let's find let's work out these details when you refuse to be refused by the, in the natural it looks impossible that's when God begins to move now the rest is history we held our meetings there we, we moved out of there, went to uh, Best Buy, uh, not Best Buy, Best Western, and then of course the history, uh, everything else is history. But faith refuses to see the natural, what has been said impossible. Am I talking to somebody? In the natural, I refuse to see the way things are. I see everything through the eyes of the Spirit. God is doing a new thing. My understanding might not comprehend all of it. But my spirit has embraced the new thing. Am I talking to somebody? It has embraced it. I have, I'm not saying it to excite you. No, my spirit. Uh, there are things I've embraced. You will not understand it. But when they begin to manifest, you say, this is what he said. Hallelujah. I decree over your lives in Jesus' name. That that which God has placed on your heart. That you've been declaring and waiting upon him. As you begin to speak it from today with corresponding actions. May it manifest for you in Jesus' name. May God show himself strong on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Let every barriers be broken. Let obstacles begin to give way in Jesus' name. I speak a release of angelic activities in the name of Jesus. Over your life, over your health, over your destiny, over your family, over your children, over everything that pertains to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I call a memorable testimony and a memorable breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We did we receive something this morning? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We release faith through our mouth. Our mouth releases faith in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's receive the offering in Jesus' name. Praise God this morning.